Welcome to another episode of Kaiju Talks. This is Jared. This is Carter. And today we're going to be discussing a little topic about uh, Hollywood and how there literally is no original ideas anymore. Yep. When was the last time we went to a movie? Well, Avatar 2. Oh, okay. Uh, hold on there. <laughs> when was the last time we saw a movie in theaters that wasn't a A, a superhero movie, B, a sequel, or see a remake. Yeah, I did see the Mario movie in theaters, but you know it's it's totally it, it's not it's none of those things, but it's totally just based on the whole Mario world, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. you, you could call it a sequel or remix sort of thing if you want to. Well, it's based ways. on a video game. Yeah, it's based on an already existing IP that I have an emotional connection to, so it wasn't like some brand new idea. I, I get I get you you went to go see it for the nostalgic. Yeah, purposes. and I think that's a lot of what movies are in the theaters right now. You know, it's like let's look at like an article that I read that Quentin Tarantino recently said that he's unsure where Hollywood is going in, in terms of like it seems to be kind of stuck in this weird situation where they're not doing new ideas. It's low risk it's Hollywood is taking low risks with these movies and stuff and it's you know, even like, you know, Christopher Nolan movies like yes, they're original ideas, they're all you know, there's no sequels or whatever unless it's the Batman trilogy, but it, they're all it's still a Christopher Nolan movie right you know what you're gonna get it's still low risk for Hollywood it's still low risk to run it in theaters because like people will go see it in theaters people will watch this movie so it's not a huge risk because you know it's Christopher Nolan and don't get me wrong I love superhero movies you know but it's like when's the last time we saw a movie like Back to the Future or the very first Terminator movie right you know those were all original movies there's still talks about doing a continuation of Back to the Future really uh, it's it's a little it's a little fuzzy, but like I keep hearing that that's like a rumor in the in the in the world that they're wanting to continue mm. doing it, but I don't think they should. I I, think it would fit in. It would fit in well with the whole like '80s '90s nostalgia thing that's going on right now. Yeah, but <laughs> not if, that I. You know, here's the thing with some of that stuff like that. Like if you if it's done properly and done well to the point where it feels like a new original concept, even if it's set in the same world, it could be good. But at the same time, it's like, you know that it's not going to be that. It's just going to be fan service and trying to, like, sell something to people that, sell something to people that they already love, right? It's... Well, and also, too, like, going back to my comment about Terminator, like, they keep on making sequels that yeah, are... How many of those have there been? Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> it's almost as bad as the Predator movies. Yeah, yeah, like, they just keep on making a ter uh, the next Terminator movie. Is where Arnold in, like, every one of them? Uh, not really, mm -hmm. no, but... Or yes and no. I, uh, it's a little getting a little fuzzy, but <laughs> there, it's you know, it's almost becoming a thing where I'd rather be seeing new uh, the new ideas through YouTube. There are mm -hmm. thousands of independent filmmakers who are trying to get into the industry, but they can't millions. because millions. Okay, yes, <laughs> millions, millions of independent filmmakers on YouTube that are struggling getting into the film industry because no production company, production house, network, whatever you want to call it, will want to take their ideas because it's considered too new. So they just make it on YouTube and, you know, for the world to see. And it's just, and I've seen some amazing stuff. I've seen some amazing content. And it's such a shame that these these individuals aren't able to get that chance because, you know, they're not they're not already in the industry or they're not related to someone in the industry mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know, I know, I, I know I might be ruffling, maybe I'm ruffling a little feathers with the whole like comment of the Nepo babies type of thing, yeah. but it, but it exists, you know, and like it, it exists in even like the, the funding world from grants and stuff. It's like for filmmakers to get a grant, oftentimes it's sort of, you got to be a recognized name. You've got to be someone that you know, it, it all comes down to what I was saying before about low risk, right? It's like if a, a funding agency is going to give money to somebody to make art, and they want to make sure that the money is actually going to go for something that's going to have good like, results, right? It's going to have a lot of views. Or it's going to get, you know, make some money itself or whatever. So it's kind of, that's, you know, yeah, it's a bit of nepotism. But at the same time, it's also sort of like, you know, these funding bodies, it's, they want to return on their investment, right? So it's, and, and, all, and usually that means that they're giving the money to people they know or people that they're friends or whatever it is. And maybe I'm just biased because I've failed on a lot of grant applications, but whatever. <laughs> Well, not to mention grant applications are too picky. Um, that's a whole other thing. That's, uh, you know, look at us. We we're, we've tried. We, we you know we we're kind of going our own route in a way. We're. I think that is sort of the 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 direction that film is going to start going because Hollywood is sort of leaning into all these like really big budget 
um, superhero movies, Christopher Nolan movies, whatever, Mario, Donkey Kong, Zelda, whatever they're going to do next, movies. But I think if you want to actually see good movies nowadays and like certain movies that make you think and movies that are interesting, you have to kind of search them out on the internet in terms of like on YouTube or whatever and like find these filmmakers who are making good short films and kind of just follow their career. Like it's it's going to be the same as sort of like music in the fact where like it's, it's given independence to filmmakers in the fact that it's so easy now to make a movie. It's so easy to like get a decent camera to put together a film. Like you can do it for relatively cheap now, and you can edit it all yourself. And, you know, gone are the days of needing like a either a reel-to-reel editor or a giant avid pro studio or whatever. Like you don't need that anymore, right? Any like they just released Final Cut on the on iPad. Like you can literally like edit your entire movie on a professional editing software on an iPad. <laughs> so uh, you know, it, I I think that the it's. One of those things where, like, it's really unfortunate that, you know, these filmmakers who are making good movies and they're ending up on YouTube or whatever uh, aren't getting a wider audience in theaters and whatnot, but I think they're they're reaching their, the audience that's more interested in their movies because you're, you're hitting that, like, specific niche, right, as opposed to just, like, going out, put it in the theaters and people come and see it and they'll like it or they won't. You, you basically guaranteeing everyone who watched it is probably going to like it because they're seeking it out uh, by themselves, right? In my honest opinion, I think what Hollywood should be doing, or not Hollywood, maybe so. I mean, Hollywood's that Matt general term for big production movies, really. Yeah. Maybe these production houses need to start kind of seeking out, maybe going online, going finding these filmmakers on YouTube, seeing the potential what it could bring to them, right? Like they don't have to say, "Okay, we're going to do it right away," but just take the time to do their research rather than just saying, "Okay, let's just do the next sequel to." Yeah, but again, uh, uh, it comes down to just return on your investment, right? Like, they, they, they know that Christopher Nolan movies are going to pack theaters. They know that the Marvel movies are going to pack theaters. They know that the Mario movie is going to pack theaters or next Disney movie or whatever. So it's like, at the end of the day, they're a business, right? They, they just want to make money. They're not going to spend money on a movie that, you know, if the budget of the movie is $13 million and they only end up making $5 million on it, they're not going to do that anymore. It's just the, the... I read this article recently where Matt Damon was saying that the problem with the current sort of film industry and why Hollywood doesn't take these risks on these smaller sort of indie films or whatever is that they're not making the return on their investment. You know, if the movie costs $13 million to make and they're only making $5 million in, in theaters, that's all the money they're going to make on it because it's doing that theatrical run and then after that it just goes to a streaming service or whatever. Um, but like 15, 20 years ago you had DVD sales. So there's this uh, additional revenue source that's kind of been lost from streaming. So you'd have your movie come out and then you'd you'd make X amount in the theaters. So even if you didn't make your whole budget in the theaters, you'd still have your DVD sales afterwards. And DVD sales counts everything like going to like blockbusters and stuff like that because blockbuster would buy all these DVDs and stuff too, right? So you're talking like a huge infrastructure of places that would buy DVDs or, or whatnot. And, and I'm sure even like streaming revenue is nothing compared to what it would have been for DVD sales. So it's harder for big production companies to take on these indie films because what happens is they're like, we have to make our budget back in the theatrical run, and if we don't, we lose money on it. And they're not, again, like I said before, they're a business. They're not in the business of losing money, they're in the business of making money. <laughs> so Maybe this has something a little bit to do with it, why uh, people are preferring to go more independent routes, like putting their stuff on internet or, you know, doing it themselves rather than relying so heavily on these big production companies. Is Let's just say, for instance, me and you take a script and... Theoretically, we brought it to Warner Brothers, and they liked the script enough that they said, okay, we want to make this into a movie, however, you have to change this, that, that, and that. Right. And they don't, people aren't really liking that their creativity is being... Yeah, I'm sure, that, I'm sure that's for sure part of it. Taken away, and let's just say, like, let's, for instance, you take a poll, and, like, people say they prefer the original idea than what Warner Brothers' idea is. Warner right. Brothers is still going to do what they want, because it's they're the ones giving you the money, which I get, but at the same time... It's it's that whole, like, now you're changing my story just for your needs, yeah. I guess. It's kind of like, I'll use this as an example. Uh, the short film um, Lights Out. Right. You know, uh, that was a, you know it, that was only, like, what, two, two and a half minute short film? And it was so effective. It mm -hmm. was so creepy. Uh, the little monster that you see at the end is, like, the most terrifying thing ever. It kind of reminded you of, like, this little, like, little troll or, like, or kind of... Uh, goblin or whatnot yeah, yeah. right and i kind of like that idea that it wasn't like a ghost it was a monster Something else, yeah. uh and then when james wan uh saw this saw the short and wanted to offer the director a chance to make it into a feature film uh i'm pretty sure that originally the story it was going to be like a uh kind of like a monster 
you know, right. like it's just like a demonic being monster. But James Wan's like, no, just change it into a ghost. Right. And it's just kind of like, okay, like I get it. You know, in my mind's going, okay, maybe, you know, this was this guy's first movie. So he's going to be like, okay, you know what? I'll change it because this is going to get my foot in the door. I get that. But for me personally, in my mind's going, no, you should have turned it into a demo- demon or like a, yeah. or a monster. And I think that's why a lot of people are maybe kind of stepping away from trying to get into the that type of... Yeah, I, I think the whole sort of the uh, the death of Hollywood, or however you want to phrase it, is kind of it sums up as sort of two main things. You have Hollywood or production companies not wanting to take chances on things; they want to have a return on their investment. And then you also have independent filmmakers who would, I'm sure, would love to be like have a big production and put it out in theaters. But at the same time, they because there's so much freedom now in filmmaking that you can do it yourself. It's better to like not compromise your art for the sake of making the money on it, right? So I think it's a bit of both of those sort of things that's kind of bringing down the uh, film industry, not bringing down the film industry, but sort of th- those sort of things is kind of like the, is what's causing the sort of like death of new original ideas in Hollywood. And the writer's strike doesn't help either. No. no. <laughs> you know what, here's the thing. There, I personally am one of those people that say I, I, I see nothing wrong with filmmakers wanting to keep, like independent filmmakers wanting to keep their ideas in, right? Like, again, like the whole Lights Out thing. Personally, after seeing Lights Out, though, you know, I actually thought it was a good movie. I still think I would have preferred if they went the original route they did. Like, it was a monster instead of a ghost. Yeah. I just thought that was a that would have been the better route they should have done. But, um, again, like, at the same time, I guess in my mind's going, oh, this is my first movie. Do I have to be this picky? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? like Depends but. how much you're willing to compromise your art, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for joining us on this one. Let us know your thoughts on Hollywood, whether you think this is the death of it or if it's still going to come back and there might be some more new original ideas in theaters. And uh, we'll love to talk to you about it. Please like and subscribe. See you in the next one. Good night.